It is uh, very, very good to see everybody here this morning, and especially those that are busy. And, uh, uh, I know uh, I definitely hated missing uh, uh, last night, but I uh, saw some awesome pictures online, uh, some, some uh, lovely smiling faces of uh, the family, and so uh, uh, glad I got to see those, glad uh, everyone was able to, to get together to, to do that. And, Looking forward to the next one. Uh, we do have an opportunity to get together uh, again and outside of worship, as we uh, talked about earlier uh, tomorrow, uh, or, or March the 8th. Be here before you know it. Uh, our uh, gospel meeting, of course, uh, with, with Tommy Tibble. And uh, just again, uh, th this particular topic that, that we're going to be discussing, that, that Tommy's going to be uh, talking to us about. Some of these, uh, uh, the, the lesson titles, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're for a couple of different uh, groups of people. Uh, we look at us as, as Christians and uh, this idea of being devoted and uh, making sure that we are uh, living as we're supposed to. And then, of course, uh, there are those that, uh, uh, that aren't Christians uh, that uh, you know, may be curious about what the life of a Christian is like. And then there are those who... Who uh, you know, no Bible, and, and uh, those out in the world that uh, is, hey, I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a Christian. I, you know, I, I do what I'm supposed to. I'm a pretty nice guy. I listen to the fish. I, uh, I haven't hurt anybody, and I'm, I'm uh, I just don't need that whole uh, organized religion thing. The titles uh, of the lessons: Are you fully devoted? How does God gain our devotion? What does it mean to be devoted? What are the benefits of devotion? How do we know we are devoted? Uh, what if we uh, lose our devotion? And are you willing to die for Jesus? That's a lot of good information for a lot of different groups of people. And so uh, just encourage you to, to first to make plans to be here uh, when, when the doors are open. And then, of course, uh, invite as many as possible to, to be able to come and, and hear. Uh, he does an excellent job with his lessons, he does an excellent job of speaking, be able to hold your attention uh, at the same time of giving you some really, really uh, good information. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you are too, and, and inviting as many as possible to come. And that kind of ties in with this uh, topic that we're, we're discussing this morning, uh, being more evangelistic, and, and here, you know, that's an opportunity for us uh, to uh, help with our evangelism, because well, we've been given some instructions by God in Matthew chapter 28, he's encouraged us to, uh, you know, to, to go, uh, to teach, uh, to make disciples. And again, he, he starts off with, you know, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. So uh, how much, if he has all of it, how much do we have? So it's not very, it's, you know, we're not going to have to use common core math on this one. If he has it all, we have, we have no authority, right? So with, with this idea of I've got all authority in heaven and earth, he says, go, therefore and make disciples. All right, so again, this go, therefore, because I have all this authority, I'm giving you some instructions. And so to his disciples, it's go make disciples of all nations. And again, it's you know, going into all the world. And Well, I, you know, we can't go, maybe I, I can't go and, and hop on a plane and just go all over the world preaching the gospel. Uh, well, let's, we'll, we'll start smaller. Let's you know, start, with, we'll start with our world, uh, you know, our, our house, our, our neighborhood. Uh, our, our family, our friends, and am I blinking funny? <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I, I do that. If I pass out and everything just goes black, just so I come here and just hit the button to go next turn. <laughs> but this idea, again, going in and having this conversation with people to, to, to have uh, uh, the gospel being preached and, and, and taught and it's given to the church and, and we're the church. And so that's a big command, a big task, a big challenge. A big responsibility. But boy, isn't that a big honor. To take the word of God, the thing that saves us, and be able to share that with others. And uh, you know, we look at, well, how can uh, little old me, and I say that, uh, hoping, hoping that uh, you don't see how big I am, but how can little old me do something like that? And uh, Paul talked about this in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, that we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. And we're just we're, we're frail, frail humans uh, compared to the almighty power of God. 
we got something pretty awesome. We, in, in, our, in our noggins up here, have the power of God. We have uh, the words that he has uh, given to us. We have this knowledge of his uh, love, his saving grace, uh, the, the ability for us to have salvation. We have that. And so he is using, God is using uh, ordinary people to do something very, very extraordinary. And uh, we, we see that uh, you know, as we look through the scriptures and, and, uh, and we see that with us. He's using us to spread the gospel, us to spread the message, this idea of evangelism. So today I want to kind of look at you what, what can we do? To get this uh, treasure that we have out of the, uh, um, you know, these jars of clay that we'll call us, how do we get that out to other jars of clay so we can put that same awesome message in them? And uh, as we read this morning, uh, Matthew chapter four, this idea of uh, fishers of men. And normally we we hear fishers of men. Well, first thing I think it was a class I went through uh, years ago, the, you know, the fishers of men class. But it's, it's tiny, we, we get this idea of, uh, you know, it's, it's evangelism, maybe, you know, personal evangelism. And I thought the picture, I don't know if you can see it uh, very well, I thought the picture that somebody painted that I, that I found online, uh, I, I searched for, you know, Google, uh, for fishes of men. And um, there's this guy, you know, he's got this net, he's, he's dragging people in and, and, and trying to save them. And out behind him is, is Jaws and Jaws' his brother and, and probably his sister. But, uh, you know, this big, massive, great white sharks chasing after people. And, and here he is trying to, trying to bring people in. And we have an opportunity to help people be rescued from something way worse than being eaten by a great white shark. And that's, a, that's pretty scary for us to think about going that way. Don't go to the beach, right? Get out of the water. Um, sin is worse than that because sin can cost uh, us our, our souls for all eternity. And so that should be uh, scarier than a great white shark. And unfortunately to some of the world it is not. And so we look at this idea of uh, fishers of men, just again, normal everyday people, normal everyday jars of clay, that uh, you know, would become uh, evangelists, uh, uh, preachers, uh, teachers, apostles and there was, there was nothing superhuman about them when, when he called them to this task and yet uh, you know we see uh, fishermen that uh, you know we look at uh, Peter and John and, and uh, yeah, uh, we look at uh, the, the, these families that were there working as as, uh, as fishermen uh, and you know I don't know what the, you know if they look like Bill Dance, if they had the you know Tennessee hat on, if they had you know Gordon's fisherman look, if they had you know all the yellow outfit on, or um, you know if they had Captain Dean working working the boat for them. I, I don't. Those are those are guys that fish. Those are guys you know that's bringing in uh, some some deadly catches. Uh, a lot of a lot of fish, and they did something even better than provide meals for people and food to eat. Uh, they provided something that uh, would, would last longer than the next meal. Uh, this opportunity for salvation. Being normal, everyday working people that would work in the kingdom. We see uh, you know, Matthew, uh, you know, tax collector, uh, he was able to, to transform these normal people into people who were doing extraordinary things. And uh, he, he did this, of course, by encouraging them to action. He did this by living his life and showing that here, here's what uh, I'm doing to do what God wants me to do. And I, I want you to go do the same thing. And so this morning I want to look at ways that we can be more evangelistic. Since I, as far as I can tell, I'm looking out here, there's, there's no uh, superhuman people out there. Uh, nobody with super magical powers. Uh, we're all just uh, normal people. So what can we do uh, to be more evangelistic? And the first thing we'll see is that uh, we can be more evangelistic by letting people see our life. And, you know, by this, I, you know, I mean the right kind of life. And by this, I mean not seeing one of our lives. Hopefully we, we live our life as who we are, that we are a Christian, 
uh, that idea of uh, that uh, you know I said before, you know, Marshall Keeble, he's talking about you know the Bible says you know let our light shine, not not make it shine, and not sitting there with a with a switch flipping Christianity on and off depends on who's in the room. Hopefully, as we are letting people see our life, it's this reflection of Christ that we're showing. Uh, we are being Christ-like as Christians, and so we, we need people to be able to see that. So again, that that helps with our evangelistic efforts here uh, ourselves and as a church. And it will start off with this one because there's a reasonably reasonable reason. This reason is first. And I'm going to let you know my, my reasoning for that statement. All right. If, if people can't see a righteous life, then the next three points in this lesson that we're going to go over this morning, they don't really matter. Of course, you, you can see those those points in, you know, in the bulletin that you've got there, or we'll, we'll go over them now. But if they don't see a righteous life, then the rest of this isn't going to work. I, I've got a picture here of you know, some guys looking at a microscope. They have a, uh, they have a Christian underneath the, you know, the little glass that they're looking at. Because we, well, we live our lives under under a microscope, and so we look at uh, you know this idea of uh, talking about the church and inviting people to hear the gospel. If we're doing that, which, which hopefully we are, but if we're doing that and living a double or triple or fourfold life, uh, again depending on uh, you know, who we're around and what we're doing and and who we think might be watching then I will go ahead and tell you we're, we're being noticed of uh, the, the differences that are in our lives. But the world's pretty evil. There, there's a lot going out there that is absolutely completely wrong. There's some people that, that care nothing about the scriptures and, and the life described in here that we should be living. But they know exactly how someone who says they're a Christian ought to be living. And they are quick to point out the differences. And so as we are, are living our life, again, to make sure that our evangelistic efforts are, are working in the right way, we, we got to be living our life right. Or else when we talk about the church, when we invite someone to, uh, to hear the gospel, uh, they don't uh, just sit there and shake their heads. I don't want a part of what you are a part of because I see how you really are living your life. And, and then finally, of course, even you know, praying for our evangelistic efforts, that, that uh, last point that we'll look at this morning, James 5 and verse 16, of course, it says the prayer of an almost sometimes righteous person has great power as it is working. He says uh, facetiously. It is the prayer of the prayer of a, of a righteous person has great power. And so if we aren't living the kind of life that we need to, if we are living in sin, if we if we aren't living as a Christian, our prayers aren't working. And we need our prayers to work. We need that relationship with God. We need to be in Christ so that when we pray for what we are trying to do, preaching the gospel, helping others uh, see the truth, when we are praying for them and their hearts and our courage and everything else that goes in, we need uh, uh, God to be able to, to hear our prayers. <clears throat> we look at this idea again of uh, seeing our life and I'm going to call it a quick timeout uh, because I'm, I'm having a, a technical difficulty, but I can fix it really fast. Uh, but we look at uh, Jesus as he is uh, uh, living his life. And uh, he, of course, lived a very, very public life. And, uh, you know, well, we, have, we even have it documented as to, uh, as to the kind of life that he lived. And... Uh, From time to time, it, you know, the scriptures might mention that he he moved away from people. He wanted some uh, time to go and and pray to God privately. I'll try to keep my computer from leaking. But for the most part, when it was time for him to. Uh, to go from place to place, to, to live and do the work. He wasn't doing it, hiding from people. Uh, his life was open to uh, 
friends, uh, to those who wanted to hear him, to those that uh, were excited about what he had to say, but also his life was open to his enemies. And they followed, his enemies followed him around looking for ways to be able to try to uh, imprison Jesus, trick Jesus, or have Jesus killed. And this wasn't just, uh, you know, they didn't sneak, uh, you know, Life 360 on Jesus' cell phone so they could follow the little dot and figure out where he was at at all times. And this was some work that they had to go into and, uh, you know, be able to, to track him down the, the, the good old-fashioned way. Somebody had to put eyeballs on him and, and follow him around from place to place, town to town. And, and well, they let it happen. He was showing them what he was doing. <coughs> Confirming with them over and over again, I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm speaking what God wants me to speak. And try as they might to try to figure out some way to trip him up. His life was on display. He wasn't afraid. As far as you know, the people around, and, and again, there were so many people able to, to see him. Uh, Sixteen times, uh, Matthew refers to the multitudes following after him. There were thousands of people following after him at, at times. His life, his comments, uh, what he said, how he acted, uh, everything was on display. And he was okay with that because he was reflecting God. Acts chapter 26, uh, verse 26, uh, you know, Paul talking to King Agrippa. He says, for the king knows about these things, and to him I, I speak boldly, for I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice. But this has not been done in a corner. Again, Jesus didn't hide from people what he was doing. The fact of his death, burial, and resurrection was not a secret that uh, you know, had to go online to be able to figure out. This was something that everyone in that area knew what was going on, what was being said, what was being taught. And he expects the same thing of us. Again, whether we like it or not, we're, we're being watched. We're being, uh, you know, we're, we're being compared to the scriptures. And he's given us instructions on how we are to live our life. It's, it's letting our light shine. It's, it's hard to hide light in darkness. I mean, we have a, we have a flashlight. You know, we try to keep it covered up so you know, our hands look like ET because uh, it is going to shine through our hands. Uh, you know, we, we try to, you know. Uh, you know uh, close a door um, so that the lightning can, we're, we're going to see light coming through the cracks. It's, it's hard to hide that, right? Well, he, he doesn't want us to hide it. That's not normally what we do with, with light. And the world is, is darkness, and he is light, and we are a reflection of him. We ought to shine brightly. There ought to be an obvious difference in us, and people ought to be able to see that, and that's what he wants. We will see our good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. Again, not so we can get that attaboy pat on the back way to go, but it's they're Christians. They're, they're living like Jesus. They're acting the way that God wants them to do. Matthew 10, 32, 33, we, we talk about this normally. Looking at uh, you know, uh, confessing our faith in Jesus as the Son of God when we talk about the way in the gospel, but it's also, again, this, it's, it's not just a one-time thing. It's not, you know, check this off, I've, I've said that one time in front of people, and, and now I'm good. But it's this idea of, uh, as we're, uh, again, living our life, having the conversations that we're having, as people are looking at us, we ought to be able to acknowledge, as uh, the English standard verse says, acknowledge him before men, confess him before men, act like we know who he is, and that we want to be following that him. To be more uh, evangelistic, we can, uh, we can talk to people about the church. And we look at uh, the gospel accounts and see, well, they're, they're full of uh, this discussion uh, of, uh, of the church, of, of the kingdom. Uh, Matthew chapter uh, 3, we see uh, John the Baptist uh, preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And again, it wasn't uh, <clears throat> judgment day is right around the corner and, and, and we're going to get going to heaven. Well, which kingdom was at hand? Uh, the one that is just a few chapters later. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be uh, the church. And so uh, the church is, is almost here. This kingdom that, uh, uh, that, that Jesus was going to build. Uh, we see in Matthew chapter 4, again, the same as repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in Matthew chapter 10, when he sent the disciples out, again, here's the message I want you to take with you. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
And so uh, we have this discussion of the kingdom parables that Jesus talked about. Uh, there are some that actually uh, mention you know, that it's the kingdom of heaven and he's talking about heaven. But for the vast majority of them, he's talking about the church. He said he's talking about us. What about us? Uh, do we talk about the church to others? Because we see uh, the early church did. Uh, we look at uh, Matthew uh, as he was writing. Uh, the kingdom is mentioned 50 times in the book of Mark. 22, Luke mentions the kingdom 40 times. Philip, when he was going to uh, Samaria, uh, preached to them about uh, Jesus, of course, but then also says uh, in verse number 12, he brings the kingdom of God to them. When Paul was uh, leaving the elders there in, in the city of Ephesus, uh, Acts chapter 20, verse 25, again, he talked about preaching to them about uh, the kingdom of God. And so this was something that you know, the church was a topic that, uh, that, that the church and uh, the early church uh, talked about to those who were teaching others, talked about the church. What about us? What, what, what do we say? Well, here's something to remember. Uh, again, we talk about the church, uh, the kingdom of God. It's also well, the family of God. And, and we're part of the family. <coughs> I won't, I won't, we won't see. But, uh, you know, we're, we're a family, uh, the family of God. And so uh, we, we talk about our family all the time, right? You don't see pictures of my grandkids. I can, I can show them to you. Uh, we talk about, uh, you know, I've, I've, got, uh, I've got some kid that, that plays golf in, in Tennessee. And uh, uh, it didn't come down often enough to visit. That's something totally different. Uh, I've got, you know, we, we talk about <clears throat> our, our family. And that's, a, well, we have a really big family. Uh, there, there are some represented here. There are some that are uh, gathering around uh, the rest of the world today. We have uh, a very, very large family. And so when we talk about things and have normal conversations, that ought to be part of a normal conversation, the fact of our, our family and what our family is doing. Uh, the activities we, we have, uh, again, the times we get together in fellowship, uh, again, uh, you know, there's, there's you know, pictures that we can show on Facebook. Here I am with my family. Uh, at, at, a, at a you know sweetheart uh, dinner, uh, you know things like that. When we gather together to, to worship, and, uh, and and what that's like, and uh, the, the fact that we, we gather to, to study the Bible together and, and worship, uh, we look at the you know the work of the church, the things that we do, and uh, uh, just you know I, I remember the little bee as I was growing up that was uh, you know stung into my head to remember uh, benevolence, uh, evangelism, edification. Uh, those things that we're doing, what part? You know, what are we doing as a family? Uh, and again, some of it is just normal, normal conversation. Here, here's what I did last night. Here's what I did this weekend. Here's, here's what's going on in my life, and, and that's a part of my life. But also at the same time, the idea of if I can make that normal, instead of here is my life over here. Oh yeah, and I do church stuff too. Instead, making it. A part of a normal conversation of here's what I do with my family and and have that conversation that is going to help us uh, with uh, our evangelistic effort if it's normalized we can be more evangelistic by inviting people to come hear the gospel and of course we see you know, get Bible examples of, of this uh, you know even Jesus extending invitations hey listen uh, come hear me teach about uh, the Word of God and uh, I saw I saw you look, and I, let me cover that up before I uh, somebody else mits, looks at my typo. <clears throat> all right, but we see Matthew chapter eleven, where Jesus says, "Come to me, all you labor and heavy laden." Listen, you know you you've got issues. Sin weighs us down. All right, and and so I want you to come, and, and uh, I'm going to give you rest. I, I'm going to offer my yoke. Because this is uh, uh, lighter and easier than the yoke that you have right now that the, the Pharisees and, and the Jewish leaders are giving you, that the devil is encouraging you to take on. I, so I Google some pictures of, of uh, this particular verse, and uh, Google, you know, I mean, you know, of course, it's not somebody named Google that's sitting there. Somebody actually made up some pictures and, and posted them on there. There's a lot of pictures of, of, uh, of, of beaches. You know, the palm trees and beautiful water and all that, and, and this verse put with it. Uh, there's pictures of, of, of people laid back in hammocks, and, and you know, this idea of you know, being you know, focused on this uh, find rest for your souls. 
That's not what he's offering here. This is an invitation. Hey, come to me. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you some information that's going to make your life better here and later. But it's an offer to come listen. It's an offer to come study with him what, what God wants us to do. Not uh, come here and I'm going to give you tickets to uh, a cruise because uh, cruises are really cheap right now as long as you can wear a mask. And that's, you know, all these, this is not what he, he's not talking about a vacation. He is talking about the gospel, uh, the, the good news that he has. Come hear that. He uh, mentions the same thing, uh, John chapter 7, verse 37, on the last and greatest day of the festival, is the festival of booths. As uh, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Again, amazingly enough, same thing. There are a lot of big pictures of uh, water flowing, uh, some you know, pictures of guys you know, just emptying out bottles of water in their mouth. And the, he uh, was not offering to give some, some poor thirsty person uh, something to quench their thirst. Uh, he was inviting them to hear a message. Of course, as he goes on, as whoever believes in me as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this he meant the, the Spirit. And those who believed in him were later to receive. After that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Again, he's offering an invitation. Come hear. Come learn. Come study. Find out what God wants you to do. It's just like quenching your thirst. We know how awesome that feels. Right? You, 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 you work outside, come in, you want that, uh, want that water uh, to, to quench thirst. And, and that's what he meant. This uh, feeling of uh, it's just like uh, quenching your thirst when you realize what God wants you to do and you're able to do it and know that now I says it for you. And of course, we don't even have to be the one to teach or preach a sermon. Again, this is an offer and an invitation. All right, just you know, same way we see in John chapter one, uh, you know, Philip is, is telling uh, Nathaniel about uh, about Jesus. You know, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, "Come and see." All right, check it out. Listen for yourself, and and maybe that's the type of invitation we offer. Of uh, you know questions about you know where do you go to church uh, you know what uh, what do you believe uh, you know talk to me about the Bible Let's come in here come and see uh, come with me uh, Revelation twenty two verse seventeen the Spirit and the Bride say come let the one who hears say come and let the one who's thirsty come the one who desires uh, take the water of life without price again it's not we're, we don't have uh, the world's greatest water here in the building. Uh, but we do have something that's really awesome. We have an opportunity to study the Word of God together. Uh, and you look at, of course, the Spirit and the Bride and say, come, who's, who's the Bride of Christ? Well, if you can uh, look around the room real fast and see that everybody in here, well, that, that's us. Uh, we're the church. Ephesians 5, Revelation 19. The Bride of Christ is us, the church. So how do we invite people to come? And usually somebody says premeditated, and you're thinking, Murder, because we watch too much TV. But this uh, premeditated asking, and we're going to flip that around. This is a good thing, right? Uh, think of who to invite, and then do it. Uh, yes, uh, the the shotgun method is awesome too. Throw it out there, and and, and maybe somebody will will, uh, will will accept the invitation and, and come. Most of the time, it's going to work better if you're having a conversation with somebody and, and you're working toward that invitation. With somebody specifically, uh, we have uh, you know we're we're not trying to sneak this in on anybody. We we have regular worship, we have regular Bible classes. We actually have a schedule. Uh, you know, there's in, in the bulletin we we have it online. Uh, you know, offer that to somebody as an event. Here, here's where we're going to meet. Uh, come and come and, uh, and and worship with me, or come and, and study the Bible together with me. We can uh, share a bulletin with them, or the house to house, heart to heart. Uh, you know that goes out in, into the neighborhoods. We have the extra you know, share that uh, with somebody to, to help them uh, study and learn. That we have something called a gospel meeting from time to time. Wow, that'd be a great time to offer an invitation to, to come and, and study God's word together. And then you know we could we could use words like would you would you come worship with me on Sunday? You know how easy that is. Well, I, I just said it. It was really easy. 
Uh, and, and we can offer that. And, and of course, even before I said that, I actually typed it out. We, we can email somebody, we can text somebody. It is very easy to offer. Let me tell you the worst thing they can say. Well, that's it. I mean, maybe nothing at all. And sometimes they may say no. Sometimes they may not answer. Sometimes it may say yes. But again, to help our evangelistic efforts, and by our, I mean us, me, you, and then us, here are some things we can do. If this is the extent of our evangelistic efforts, what we're doing right now, we're not going into all the world. Not even our world. Or are we doing what's right right now? Or are we worshiping God? Absolutely. But that is not all there is to being a Christian. There is so much more. Again, we, we talked about the little bee. Benevolence, evangelism, edification. Included in that is, is worship. But there is so much more than that. Of course, part of worship uh, is, uh, is prayer. Talking to God. And so to be more evangelistic, uh, we can pray for our efforts that we're doing. And again, that's, that's, that's us praying for us. For us, uh, us praying for, for what we're doing. The, the people that we're, we're targeting to, to try to encourage to, to, to study. And also uh, as the, the church in general. And we see uh, our ultimate example. Jesus prayed specifically for evangelism. Now, Matthew chapter 9, again, it, you know, uh, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And of course, then the very next thing we see in chapter 10 is he sends out laborers into the harvest. So it's pray and, and do. Now, Matthew chapter 5, he wants us to, to pray for our, our enemies. Uh, you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But I, I said you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For it makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Again, there's, especially, I, I don't know, it's just probably always been something similar to this, but in, in the world today, I mean, just, you know, if you're, if you don't agree with exactly everything that I believe, then obviously you hate me, is the attitude that some people have in the world. And so there are people that, that have some enemies because, well, they don't agree with me. And so there's some people that, uh, you know, may not like us. We need to pray. We need to pray that they understand what we're trying to do, uh, the fact that we love them enough to have a conversation with them. And sometimes, you know, we love them enough to tell them what they need to hear, maybe not what they want to hear. And so, again, you look at uh, why pray for our enemies, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Just like our elder brother, uh, the Son of God, prayed for those uh, that were driving the nails into his body, those who were in charge of his uh, murder. He, he prayed for them. Why should we be any different? In John chapter 17, again, Jesus prayed for those who would believe in him through their work. Again, there were those that are, were not around when, when he was here on this earth. Us, for example. And so we have a record of his life, of his teaching. And so, uh, again, John 17, he, he was praying for those who were going to learn about him through the scriptures. And even though they weren't there to physically see it, they would take the eyewitness accounts to be able to believe because of, of those uh, letters that were written, the words that he was going to include in the scriptures. We see the early church praying for their evangelistic efforts as well. Uh, Philippians 4, verse, uh, verse 5, uh, the Lord is at hand. Uh, again, he's, he's, he's close by. He's, he's everywhere. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And we're encouraged to pray for what we want. We want people to obey the gospel. Are we praying for that? Is that a thought in our head as we are are going through the list of, of thanking God for things and asking God for things. Is that one of the things that we're asking for, uh, specifically about evangelism? We see 
2 uh, Thessalonians 3, verse 1. Finally, brothers, pray for us. Again, this is Paul talking to the church at Thessalonica. That the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored, as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith. Are we praying that the gospel is unhindered? That we're able to go where we want to, to be able to preach and teach who we want to? And again, 1 uh, Timothy 2, verse 1, we, we pray for everybody. Again, that, that includes uh, friends and, and those who would uh, think of us as enemies. Are we praying for all mankind? And he even mentions uh, praying for politicians and leaders. Uh, are, we, are we praying for them or do we uh, write them off because their, uh, uh, the symbol of their party doesn't match who our symbol is? Hopefully we're praying for everybody that they will see the scriptures and uh, abide by them and be pleasing to God when they make decisions about the laws of the land. So we look at, again, with us specifically, we've seen examples of how, how do we pray for our evangelistic efforts. Again, it's, it's being specific when we pray, asking for doors to be opened. Whether that's asking for doors to be opened or when we ask for a particular door to be opened. And whether that's actually, hopefully they invite me in their home, or maybe we're just talking about their heart. Maybe we're talking about their mind, their ears, that they hear us and understand us, and that they are willing to listen to, uh, to, to be able to change if they need to. Uh, pray for courage, that uh, again, uh, uh, for us, uh, because sometimes our words have consequences uh, that, uh, that make it hard. Pray for courage, that, again, to be able to say what we need to be able to say in the right way. But again, uh, that, we, that we say it. Pray for the work of the church. Again, uh, these efforts that we have uh, reaching out into the neighborhoods here, uh, and, and we have uh, the word going around the world. Pray for um, uh, the work that's going on. Pray for our elders. Pray for, for Steve and Johnny, as they are um, helping lead us in the right direction and uh, setting a course for us to be able to do the work of the church. That as they uh, read through the scriptures and study and, and are uh, looking for ways to make sure that uh, when we reach Judgment Day that uh, there is one big massive family reunion um, just through the gates as we we're able to, to see each other and, and be able to spend eternity together. That's, that's their aim. Uh, they want us all to be there. And so as they are, are helping uh, us move in that direction. Pray for them again to have the uh, uh, strength, courage, and faith to be doing what needs to be done. Pray for our Bible class teachers as uh, we are again teaching those who will go out uh, with this effort uh, again imparting knowledge so that we can go out and share the same knowledge. It's good news that that we know we don't want to take for granted. Uh, we want to we want to continue spreading this message, and uh, sometimes, of course, that, that message it can get started at home with parents teaching their children, and then sometimes, of course, it's uh, sometimes it starts in these Bible classes, and sometimes it's continued in the Bible classes, and uh, praying for them to be able to, to to study and learn and share this good news that we know, and uh, I'll I'll even throw in me. Uh, pray for me that. Uh, I'll be able to do the work that uh, needs to be done. Again, saying what needs to be said, but in the right way. Uh, the truth and love. And uh, as we are, again, helping each other move in the right direction. Uh, that, uh, again, once we have this information that we're, we're studying and learning that, you know, I saw a sign, you know, it's enter to worship and exit to serve. We have an entire world needing to be served. And pray that as we are preparing for that work in here, that we're able to move out these doors and do that. We started off uh, uh, talking about uh, this idea of uh, God using ordinary people uh, to pass along an extraordinary message. And we see examples of that in, in the scriptures, but we can look around this room and see exactly the same thing. We're ordinary people. Uh, you know, the jars of clay. But we have something in us, uh, this uh, message that we have that is vital for us and uh, everyone else in the world. And he wants to use us to pass along that message. 
And so uh, I encourage you to be involved with the work of the church. And there's a couple of things with that. Again, it's, it's uh, work, be involved, finding something to do to help spread the message, to, to do the work, but also, again, continue to pray. And I think that starts with this, uh, what we read about in Matthew 6, 33. It's focused on seeking first his kingdom and, and his righteousness. What does God want me to do? Right. Now I need to do it. And, of course, that, that starts with obeying the gospel, uh, becoming a Christian. And then that continues with staying a Christian and making sure that our focus is on living righteously, doing, doing right, following what God wants us to do. And if there is uh, something that we can do to help either uh, you obey the gospel or to come back to uh, God, to be in Christ again, we would love to be able to help you do that. Even now, as we stand and sing.